Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our retro review of the Palm Touchstone Charger. So some of you guys may remember that a few weeks back we checked out the HP Touchpad as well as the HP Veer, and in particular this is one of the more memorable phones that I remember reviewing, so I was pretty excited to pick it up, and because I now have it in my hands, I also wanted to add that to a wireless charging capability in the form of the Touchstone. So this is an optional accessory that you could pick up back in the day, uh, and it was released first by Palm and then continued by HP before, again, they shut down the WebOS platform for a bit and then sold it off to LG. So this adds that inductive charging capability to, um, let's say, any pre-existing Pre Plus, you know, Pre 2, Pre 3, as well as the HP Veer, which all feature that inductive uh, coil that's actually built in. You don't have to add any special backplates or adapters, and it works just uh, as is. Otherwise, it is a proprietary technology that did come out before the Qi inductive uh, tech that we have today in more modern phones, and that's the current standard, but it works equally as well in from my testing. Something I will note that is that this particular touchstone charger is really meant for the phones, and the HP touchpad, that tablet, actually did not work with this. You had to get its own uh, kind of this wireless charging dock that sold for about a 20 to 30 bu bucks more um, MRSP than this uh, touchstone adapter. You can now find this online through Amazon eBay for about 15 bucks and under, which makes it a steal in my opinion compared to uh, Qi chargers. It has a great construction quality. It works very well. It has a magnetic component, so it uh, sticks on the phone just really easily, and it doesn't fall off when it's actually being charged. And again, it's better made than a lot of those generic chargers you might find floating around. So if you are still using an HP or a Palm product, definitely consider picking one of these up. So taking a closer look at the overall build first, we have access to that Palm logo on the front. Uh, even though HP later took over, they never replaced this uh, branding. There's also access to this uh, soft touch rubber behind this magnet, which allows you to protect your phone so it doesn't scratch when you have it positioned on the stock. The outer shell of the unit is made out of this soft touch rubber as well, which prevents fingerprints from being attracted. And there's also a polycarbonate frame on the inside, which makes it feel surprisingly hefty for a plastic dock. On the back here, you have access to the uh, micro USB power lead, which can be plugged into the wall for power. It works with uh, basically any cable, you know, five, five volts, uh, one amp and up will work basically just fine. But one of the disappointing facets that I found was how recessed this uh, particular design is. You can see how it goes all the way in almost like the first generation of the Apple iPhone with that recessed headphone port. It really limited what options you could pick up just because even though the port was standard, you can't use a cable that's too fat with the tip uh, because otherwise it can't go all the way in. So here we actually managed to find a cable uh, that actually works. Of course, you can use a standard palm cable, but uh, you can have to pick one of one of those up separately. They might cost a little bit more now since they are out of production. So here we have an example. You can kind of see the alignment here. It has the uh, flat end or the shorter end facing upward. So we're just going to plug this in kind of put it upwards at this angle and then push all the way and it stays in quite firmly. So it does have a pretty elegant approach once the cables are plugged in, but aligning this, if you have to unplug it and then replug it back in, can be a bit of a hassle. On the back there's access to a micro suction cup, which uh, is this relatively new technology that was being used. It allows the dock itself to be very securely placed on a flat surface. So if you have a desk, you can actually mount this down. It doesn't relieve a residue in the sense of a glue or tape wood, but it really securely seals and almost sucks this dock onto the surface. And you can almost lift up the entire table before this thing wants to, you know, come off. And of course you apply a bit more pressure, preferably with a bit of water if you do want to put it down more securely and more permanently. Otherwise it is quite hefty on its own so I don't really see a massive need for that. It also comes with this uh, protective film that you can put back on and uh, prevent it from getting stuck on things when you just want to set it down. There's also access to some basic info about Palm as well as the specifications for the charger and that's uh, basically it from a design perspective. Again it does have this almost tilted wedge-like shape which I do like because it kind of acts as this uh, pseudo dock uh, due to that magnetic functionality. You can still use your phone tilted upwards when you're sitting on your desk, kind of easier for typing, maybe for text entry. Um, and you can see how it makes interacting with it as well as uh, maybe watching back videos, browsing the web, just a bit more easy because of that tilted angle uh, is easier to read content from your phone's display, which is unique. Otherwise, as far as the performance is concerned, uh, this dock, you know, touchstone docks as well as a wireless charging docks in general take longer than a standard 
standard wall charger. Um, the same thing can be said here. Um, it took me roughly, I would say, 3.5 hours to completely charge this uh, Veer, and about the same time, in fact, with a standard Pre 2 and a Pre Plus. So it's going to take a bit, bit, a bit longer, about 30 minutes to an hour longer, uh, depending on uh, your phone, if you're using this as opposed to a generic wall plug. Um, otherwise, again, it just simply plugs into the wall. It's a pretty typical USB lead. You can also plug it into a computer in some cases and drive it, although a uh, computer USB drives tends to have uh, lower power ratings, so it might take longer for your phone to be you know, fully, fully charged up, even longer, in fact, uh, considering this is a wireless charger. Otherwise, during performance, it remains decent. Uh, it gets a little bit hot sometimes, so when you touch it on the sides, it does get a little hot. And one thing I noticed is that even though once the battery is fully charged, the process does stop. It seems like the inductive coils, they don't fully, they're not as energy efficient here as they are on Qi that we have today because even though the charging process stopped and the phone got pretty cool after the, the battery was full, I touched it and left it on the dock for an additional 45 to an hour and I touched the dock and it was still a little bit hot. So that was something a little interesting. So completely energy efficient, perhaps not, but it certainly does work. So anyways guys, this has been a quick retro look back and a retro review of the Palm inductive charger, the uh, Touchstone, and this is actually one of the first commercially available uh, wireless charging kits that you could have picked up back in the day for a smartphone. So a fun piece of history as well as a pretty cool retro tech. Thanks for watching this video look back and retro review here at OS Reviews. This has been the Palm Touchstone Charger.